it's a miserable day here. Here I am on Vancouver Island. Let me just wipe this lens. It is a wet, wet day. Anyway, I just wanted to stop by and show you an example of what happens when you don't do a little bit of homework ahead of time. So here this uh, gorgeous property is out on the ocean and the owner wants to build a couple of homes. He wants to build one on the back of this property, a guest home, and he wants to build one on the front. That meaning he needed two water wells to be drilled. So he called the drillers in, the local drillers, and uh, said here, dry, you know, drill me some holes. So, so they went to town, they found a nice place to park for a couple of days and uh, they just backed in here, lots of shade under the tree, and they drilled a hole. Took it down to, I think, roughly 400 feet. As you can see, the pipe is removed because we abandoned the hole, but uh, there was no water. So not only did it cost these folks quite a bit of money to drill this 400 foot hole, but it cost some money to get rid of the hole. So this was quite a disappointment for the property owner. But a bigger concern than, than, you know, maybe even the money itself was the fact that he owned this property and all of a sudden it looked like he was going to have a problem getting water to build these homes. I came in, I assessed the property. I looked at, you know, we've got neighboring properties here. You have to consider that. You have to go, okay, well, we're all the septic fields and all of that located. We figured that all out. I recognized that by the time everything was going to be completed the way he visualized on this property. And we also have some road allowance here to consider. So there was, you know, there was a lot going on here. But it left us with a very small area to actually do the drilling for two wells. We don't want to go too deep. Deeper you go, the higher the risk is of, you know, salt water, salt water intrusion. And see the old house that's going to be taken down is over there. There's another home over there. We kind of had to work in this dry hole area. So I was already up against a difficult situation. But look what I did. Let's go over here. So maybe, I don't know, 25, 30 feet. And there's the new well that we have put in all capped, registered well, and uh, I think it's about 180 feet, producing well, plenty of water for one of the homes. So there's a good viable well that's been doused, dry hole. Now we needed to have a second well put in. Let's take a look. So there's the producing well. I found another decent source of water or the best for the situation. And there's the second hole right there. It's not a gusher, not by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's a gallon and a half a minute or a couple gallons a minute. There's plenty of water here to serve a home if it's designed properly. But again, it's not a, a real high producer, but that's just not what's gonna happen on this property. But what we do have is we've got two doused producing wells. So, I mean, I've been doing this work for 25 years and so many people say, does dowsing work? And often a driller will tell you that dowsing doesn't work, but I sit with about a 98% average. I have done a few thousand wells and this is kind of a, pr and this is not an uncommon situation. I don't see it every day, but I certainly get phone calls almost every week of dry hole drilling. So when you're drilling a well, you're paying by the foot. When you're abandoning a dry hole, it's also going to cost you a lot of money. You kind of tell me what you think. You know, we've got a producing well, producing well, and a dry hole. 